Hello everyone and welcome back to Copperline Rider Ranch. I'm Julia and we've been working on the inside since this monsoon. Um, we're only putting in about four to six hours a day inside. It's kind of grueling work and, and tedious. So last video I showed you how I was fixing some of the cracks that were happening in the mud that we're putting on the walls. Uh, that was somewhat successful for the teeny tiny little hairline cracks. That little gentle massage will work, but I was getting some larger cracks, so I ended up just making a slip out of just our clay soil and water. I sifted that through an eighth inch screen um, to get all the little tiny, tiny pebbles out um, to make it flow a little bit better, and that seems to be working really well. So I think that's just going to be my plan from now on for anything new that cracks. I'll just make another slip and and uh, get that into the cracks and, and hope that it seals everything up. But let me show you how far I've gotten so far this week. All right, this is bedroom where you see that light. And of course, you can see the bottle window through the uh, wood frame for the wall between the bedroom and the bathroom. This is the west wall. I'm not quite finished with it. And you can see above that window, we did put that wire over the uh, lentil. And that one is the first one that I've managed to get done. It takes a lot of mud to get that filled up and get it as close to even with everything as possible. But the rest of the way, I've made it up to the lentil height. So I've got the scaffold out, as you saw just a second ago, and going around the room to finish up all that stuff that's up there. Um, this is the wall I did first. Sorry, I'm going to swing back by here. Here's where I started and was showing you how I was fixing the uh, cracks. And that's how it went. So the color, again, is really pretty, but it's just so dark um, that I don't think that we can take it being this dark in here. I like to have a lot of light and reflection in the room. So we're still planning on painting with a lime paint that we can make. I'm looking into recipes uh, for that and I'm finding a couple different things so I might uh, check out a little bit more and see who seems to be having the most success. All right everyone, we've been working on the inside of the house with the mud. It's really kind of boring for videoing. Um, so James Waterman asked twice now for a tour of the outdoor kitchen. Uh, the outdoor kitchen was the first thing that we ever did with earth bags. It was our trial uh, build, and we made a lot of mistakes with this build, I will tell you that. But I still like the design, and I still like using the oven more than the rocket stoves. So let's go through. Um, I've shown you already some photographs of what it looked like when it was brand spanking new and beautiful. But it's been about three years now since it was built, and I'll show you some of the things that I did wrong um, and that I will probably correct in the future. Probably not until we have the house built. Maybe redo this uh, between the house and the indoor-outdoor kitchen. So the indoor-outdoor kitchen will be a building with a kitchen in it separate from the house is what that's going to be with the dining area. Um, but like I said, this was our first uh, earth bag build. So we'll go over it and talk to you about what happened, what I did, how I built it, and what I will probably do to fix a few things. All right, so this is the oven portion. And this, you can see all these little screws there. This just recently fell off. So this I was just trying to see what I could do to get mud to stick to the wood. And you know, they always say use uh, chicken wire or some sort of wire mesh. Um, so I thought, let me try some screws because I didn't have any mesh with me at the time that I made it. So that mud fell off literally just this week. But anyway, we'll get back to that. So the whole design is like several U-shaped areas all made with the earth bags. It took 150 of the 18 by 30 uh, sandbags filled with soil, you know, damp soil and tamped with barbed wire in between. Um, we just kept making U shapes and I'll show you some old photographs of that in just a bit and made our sections. So this section was always going to be a countertop kind of a prep or serve area with area down below for, oh, there's a little onion on the ground, um, 
for wood that we need for the wood stove. Um, and that's all that's ever been meant to do to be. And it works out great. I do like that. These two areas are the rocket stoves. And I think for me, I, I'm not crazy about using them. I have used them, but because my chimney is really long, it takes a bit for the heat to get up to the grid, the, the top the top area of the rocket stove. Um, and it also takes a lot of work to keep the fire going. Um, let me pull this old decoration off. There's a mask over there, I should get out of there. <clears throat> this is how long it's been, there's uh, spider webs in there. But you put the, the wood, small pieces of wood in this area, this bottom area here, is the airflow so when you're burning the wood pieces in here air will flow under here to keep it burning and also draft that flame and, and heat up this chimney i thought i would just give it a try uh, like i said i think this chimney is probably just too long and um it takes just constant 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 uh uh installation of the wood pieces they burn very efficiently it is an efficient method um, because those wood pieces burn fast they burn hot and there's hardly any ash left when you're done with it um, so that is an efficient thing but i like i said i think my uh, uh, chimney here is too long and it just takes a lot of stoking of that fire to keep it going so i've got these two bays that i had for that in this one you can kind of see the earth bags behind it my chickens when we were free ranging them used to get in there and peck um, at that mud and, and cause that a uh, little bit of collapse there but we can see if we can maybe i don't know if it's kind of dark in there you can't really see uh, these tops were made out of uh, hardy backer that i cut and used a, a hole saw to drill the the hole size that i wanted there and then covered with mud so built up on the mud with mud here to cause make a little shelf i put the hardy backer down and then I put the mud on. And when I did the mud, there's a nail there. Uh, after, when it was still wet, I put my grate on there so that it would fit nicely and not want to rock off. So that grate, you can see those lines. When the mud was still wet, I put that grate on there. These areas on top of the earth, the, uh, earth bags, I made a little, uh, this is all just mud, thick, thick cob mud um, to put utensils on, a cup of coffee on, a soda on, a hot pot on, you know, here on this one, just so I'd have, you know, a place if I wanted to stick something hot or stick something that I'm going to add to a cooking pot over there. There's my little lizard. <clears throat> so that's that. Those are just the earth bags stacked in like three little sort of cubic u shapes uh barbed wire between everything i did not put any rebar in this at all and i did not do any kind of foundation so i'm regretting those two things over here on the oven what i did for all this stone is dry stacked so each layer is a layer of stone dry stacked I put a layer down and I actually stood on it all over to make sure it wasn't rocking, make sure everything was settled, put another layer on, did the same thing all the way up to that top. All that is dry stack stone. And then I did sprinkle some sand in between just to kind of help. You can kind of see some of it has spilled out just to kind of help keep it dry stacked. After that, I topped it off in this. The reason there's a wood frame here is because in here are I don't even know how many beer bottles all stacked as tightly as I could get them in there without breaking them and that's a thermal uh, uh, barrier if you will or it just helps to hold in the heat these are just regular clay bricks I did not go with asbestos bricks or the uh, I shouldn't say asbestos bricks I did not go with the uh, oh those fire bricks mostly because they contain things like asbestos this is the chamber of the oven so the bricks just stacked neatly on top of those bottles the bottles have sand around them the bricks are all stacked neatly um, 
on top of that. And then what I did here was I took damp sand, built up my dome shape, and you can see it's not as not as high as the whole thing goes because we got at least three inches of mud over top of that. Built a nice dome shape, added wet newspaper on top, and then started applying my uh, mud. And you go around it like this. And another layer around all that three inches and you just keep building around and around and around till you get to the top. Once that was wet here where I needed my opening to be, I, I had built it out like this. I constructed a pretty awful door. Um, put it in there and as I was building, built it to fit. Now, of course, after the first firing, I did lose some of this mud right here, which is okay because it kind of gave it a way to vent when I'm heating up the oven. So that is that. And this burns fantastic. It works really well. Um, it can get up to about 750, 800 degrees in there if I put enough wood in there. Um, the thing about this, about an earth oven, or if you want to call it a pizza oven or whatever you want to call it, um, is you have to plan ahead. You have to think about uh, your day. If you're planning to cook in that and you don't want it to be seven or 800 degrees when you cook, like you want to bake, you know, bread in there or biscuits or, um, you know, some sort of roast or something, and you don't want the heat that high, you have to let it burn down and let it cool down a little before before you put anything that you want you know, 500 degrees or less in there. Otherwise, you're going to burn everything. So that, that was a little bit of a learning curve. So the things that I did wrong, like I said, this cr crashed. I still like the dry stack stone. Um, I did not have enough straw, period, in the clay, in the mud that I put on here. Um, a number of things you can see right down here. This is actually a spot where uh, we had a really bad windstorm and uh, one of our pens took off and it actually clobbered into it and broke this area right here. Um, and that's caused, of course, some ongoing problems. You can see the earth bag in there. So that's one of the things I have to fix. I didn't have a foundation. That's another problem that we had. I did put uh, boiled linseed oil, two coats all around it, and I really should have done more um, because I think that would have helped prevent some of these problems that I've had. But like I said, the biggest thing is I did not put enough straw in this uh, clay, in the mud that we have here. The foundation maybe would have helped keep it from settling too much and that could have helped prevent some of that cracking that you saw on the front. This is the back side. You can see the wind whips, everything under here. Um, nothing too exciting back here except I did put a little tail on my turtle, if you will. Um, and some little claws up here. That was just for fun. But that's that. That is the outdoor kitchen. Uh, like I said, when I redo it, Chances are we'll probably eliminate these two bays, bring this bay back over here, take all that away and actually just put a table out there because it's nice to be in here in the summertime when it's sunny um, and be in the shade and not have to worry about anything. After we built this, uh, the outdoor kitchen, the cob or the earth bag part, Don did want to put this cover over. He did a fantastic job. <clears throat> of putting it over here and we used that corrugated steel because I thought I shouldn't say steel I don't know what it is uh, material because I felt like that would be fitting for an outdoor kitchen area and for um, a ranch area you know I thought it'd be you know less formal um, much more inviting Don also did put a few uh, solar panels just those small little cheap ones on the roof the roof is on Dora um, and then we do have an inverter and a couple of batteries over there that work these lights uh, that are up here at the top. And then also when we have our Christmas lights on, um, we'll run those two through that inverter. The <coughs> little car air fresheners are just to help keep the flies away. Those are the vanilla flavored ones, vanilla flavor or vanilla scented ones will help keep flies away. And in uh, the early parts of the summer, we have a huge fly problem out here. Out here in the sticks, everybody does. So so that is that. 
let me just show you one other thing that I that I did. So this during our, our, our build of the house has been a workbench mostly um, because like I said you have to pre-plan to use the oven um, so when we're working long hours I, I just don't plan on using that oven I just use the, the kitchen in the RV um, but over here since we built this what I also wanted was I put these uh, stainless steel buckets you can buy them online <clears throat> excuse me they have a flat side and I added the magnets I added a magnet in the wood I don't know if you can see it and a magnet to the stainless steel holds it in place and what I do when I do cook out here right now I've got gloves in here because that's you know that's what we do um, is I put hot soapy water here and a hot clear rinse here so if I drop anything on the ground I can dunk it in here and give it a quick scrub rinse it off and be able to use it again without having to go all the way over to the RV which is way over there I go if you can see the top of it um, and then clean it off so that is that also in here as I'm looking over here behind the screen is a television set so Don has that hooked up to our antenna we use an antenna television system out here we do not have cable or satellite dish and then we can also hook up any um, DVDs we can do live streaming on there with uh, our computer that kind of thing so we do that mostly in the fall when football season starts Don likes to sit out here with some of his buddies and watch some football games out here so it gives them a space where it's cool and comfortable they can make as much noise as they want this is just a simple construction on our um, cover down in the ground we went I can't remember how many feet down uh, those uh, pieces of lumber are concreted down underneath the ground um, so that's you know four by four construction on on all the heavy parts of the frame and then two by four on everything else but I really like how that turned out and it's been pretty darn good um, as you can see over here we do have our little propane gas stove and that's what I'll use anymore instead of the rocket stoves just because it's a little more efficient a little easier to use so if I were to redo this and keep those rocket stoves I would probably just change them over to propane and that's the tour of the outdoor kitchen and here comes Mr. Boris hi Boris All right, that's going to be it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, any questions or comments, please put them in that comment section below this video, and we will see you next time. Bye.